When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. What's up, Mr. Baldwin? How are you, my man? I'm good, Mr. Wally. I am good. Not as good as you in that master shirt, though. You're looking oh, fresh. Man. Well, thank you, man. I um, Speaking of the masters um, and how I get rejected all the time, are you in the are you in the masters lottery? Like, do you ever try to get masters tickets? No, I'm not as right. close to Augusta as you are, though. Well, I I feel a thousand miles away when I get this email. Like, so every every year you can enter this lottery via email. You sign up. Re, I mean, you register, put all your information in, and then all of a sudden you can get these. You can get a chance to get these highly sought after tickets. To the Masters golf tournament. How Augusta, many tickets is, do you get? Uh, well, you can you can apply for I think up to four for every day. Oh, so but, I don't even have to add to the lottery. You're in it. Perfect. Well, the kicker, the kicker. Thanks for is, doing that for us. <laughs> <laughs> the kicker is you're not going to get you're not going to get picked if you're especially if you're <laughs> if you're me. I think, um, and I, I put it on my Facebook every year. What the Losers Club. We get our rejection letters every single year. I've been doing this for a long time. And um, shortly after the current year's Masters is over, you can you can reapply. And every year I get the same email. And it's like, thank you for your application to the Masters tournament, unfortunately. And then I just quit reading from there. I'm like, uh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're not getting in. Uh, but all my friends are the same way. I've had one friend that that got it, and he posted it on Facebook, but he didn't take me. So I don't really know how good of a friend you really are. You yeah, know what I mean? That's that's what I'm saying. Hey, speaking well, of uh, friends, I was over in Baldwin County the other day, and um, Baldwin I think County. about you when I pass the. Um, there's a there's a sign that says the Baldwin Beach Express in Baldwin County, <laughs> and I think about sending you a picture of it, but I'm either going too fast and it's dangerous, or you probably make fun of me because it's cheesy to do. But Baldwin County is where Bucky's is. Remember when y'all were mm-hmm. hanging out in Mobile and you were like, Dude. "Yeah." So so big news on that front because you know how obsessed my wife and my son are with Bucky's. Yeah. Um, and they just couldn't wait to get to a Bucky's and see what it was all about. Uh, my wife was stuck on Bucky's Instagram reels for like ever. She was on that algorithm. Mm-hmm. So not, not but two or three days ago, Bucky's put a billboard up in New Jersey. And we think that we might be getting one. Oh man. We're not really oh, sure. Oh man. It's a, it was just a it was a billboard and it said Bucky's and it had a U-turn sign and it said 821 miles <laughs> with Bucky's website on it. So I don't know if they're just they're taunting us because we don't have something as great as Bucky's up here, or they may be on bringing one. Maybe a teaser, maybe one coming. But man, I if, if you don't know what Bucky's is, it's a <clears throat> it's like the mecca of gas stations. It's not a truck stop. They don't allow big like semi trucks in there, but when I say gas station, I mean the first time we got one in Baldwin County, it was like a like a field trip. Everybody wanted to go see it. And you go in and there's like a hundred or more gas pumps, literally a hundred or more. And there's like 30 Tesla stalls. And then when you finally go in the actual inside part, it's yeah, you, got you really everything. you really buried the lead on that one. The inside is the lead. <laughs> well, I mean, you can talk about the inside, but just getting in the parking lot, you're like, man, this is—is is this an amusement park? Oh, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's literally a like a fast food barbecue restaurant mixed with a grocery shop, mixed with a convenience store. Don't forget to check out the clothing section. 
Yeah. And then on your way out, also, can you stop by the housewares and make sure we don't need like a new frying pan to bring home? Yeah. And <laughs> don't forget to get fudge and a deli sandwich and oh, yeah. stop by the bakery. It's 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 a mile <laughs> long, it feels like when you're looking down. And they're all so nice. And the bathrooms, the bathrooms are so clean. That's oh, the main thing. I forgot all yeah. about the bathrooms because <laughs> Man, they add so much value, you just forget. I mean, you could just pick, <laughs> pick one, but man, and they got like 40 or 50 ice machines outside out of the things where you get the ice bags out. It's really a sight to behold. I just, I think they're from Texas, and we, you know, we've since got one in Auburn, and um, which I've not been to that one, but I've passed it because you can see it from Google Earth just about. <laughs> uh, but Anyway, um, did you want to keep talking about, I think I cut you off about Bucky's and I didn't mean to, my man. No, it's all right. I mean, you, you get excited when you talk about Bucky's. Man, I really do. And I hope you get uh, one for the family, you know, because yeah, they were so for, excited. I know they were. I, is you it just as exciting when you have, we were swimming in? I did. To go to Bucky's. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it just as cool like the hundredth time you've been there? Well, it's kind of um no, no, it's not. Because if you're just going in there to get like a, a water, you still have to go through the whole fanfare and, and everybody's like the the first timers are like, Oh my god. <laughs> and you're like, get yeah. out of the way, I'm just trying to get some water. <laughs> I'm late. Yeah. They're buying Bucky's pajama pants and Bucky's t shirts and stuffed animals. <laughs> Taking pictures <laughs> with Bucky. And I'll I just say that. look, man, I'm just trying to get a brisket <laughs> burrito, a water, and I gotta get to to uh Pensacola or wherever I'm going. Yeah, but, I think we spent I spent I think we spent like an hour inside Bucky's when we were there. Uh yeah. culture shock, culture shock. Uh um, but that Bucky's is in Baldwin County. So yeah. Yeah. Um well anyway, so you were talking before we got onto Bucky's, you were saying you were in Baldwin County for some reason and you thought of me, or was the was that the whole point? Oh, it was because I saw the Baldwin Beach Express sign. Oh no, so that was the whole point. All right, well, it brought us to Bucky, so it was worthy. Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of wasted time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. And what a we left them on a little bit of a cliffhanger last time, Tony Wally. What were we talking mm -hmm. about? Well, we were talking about our experiences uh, with transitioning over from whatever kind of pay scale we were on, whether that be hourly or commission or whatever salary to piece rate. And you were in the middle of telling about how in your transition – you had brought up the two, the mock pay scale, what they would have made, and then what they they actually made on the current way of paying them. And you were talking about you actually lost a guy, but he wasn't leaving because of that. He was respectfully leaving because he had another opportunity somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, so he had found this opportunity to <clears throat> open his own business kind of under somebody else to kind of limit his exposure and his risk. Um and I hope it works out for him. Um, but uh, yeah, no, we had just, uh, you know, we kind of did, you know, what you did and what a lot of people do is, you know, um, we give them a, a one month warning. Right. And then we post those numbers of here, you know, this is, this is what you made. This is what you would have made. This is what you made. This is what you would have made. Um, and they can slowly start to see, you know, the minute we posted them, it was like, Oh, well, look at last week. Last week I sold 35 hours mm -hmm. and this went wrong and that went wrong and that went wrong. That really could have been 43 hours. And that's yeah. what I would have been paid if I got to 43 hours. And then the next week it's okay. I, I got myself up to 38 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I still have this and this and this go wrong. Right. Um, so it's very easy for them to see, to start focusing on the hours. Right. And then they yeah. can slowly start it to incrementally get better. Yeah. And it's not such a huge shock to them. 
And we also gave our guys 30 days and we just pumped it up because it was really, it's not really anything to be scared of. You just have to be shown how to do it and how to calculate it. Um, and really the hard work is done on the, on the back end in the taskmaster, you know, that's why it's such a month. We're so adamant as coaches, get your taskmaster done. Um, have you done your taskmaster? Well, if you haven't, then it's hard to, to move on. You know, it's hard to go to the yeah. next step because it's such a building block process, but um, so all the hard work is done. All they need to see is, is how much is this task worth? And you've got that figured out. And once, once they saw that they were, they were chomping at the bit. I mean, they couldn't get the 30 days couldn't go by fast enough. They were ready two weeks, two weeks mm -hmm. in. They were like, man, can I, can I do it now? Can I do it now? It's, me and my general manager were, we, we stuck to the plan. And after 30 days, we were off and running. And I mean, did we have some hiccups? Absolutely. But they were nothing that um, that we didn't figure out. And um, there were things in the price book. There were tiers that overlapped. And I had to do the math again on that, where, you know, if you sold a certain number of hours, um, you made this amount. But if you sold a little bit more, you made less. And I had to figure that out. And that that all stemmed from, from a, from a um, situation that you and I talked about where didn't feel like the base pay was enough for the guys. Mm -hmm. And I, I upped it a little bit and that created a backlash that we had to figure out, but we've not looked back. I mean, we, we haven't lost anybody over it. Everybody's excited about it. And it's the, the, the one overwhelming thing about it is that it's easy for them to look in and say, this is where I'm at. Or at least they can look in or the, the, our GM can look in and say, this is where you're at. I don't know that they can in service Titan. You can't keep up unless you do it manually with sold hours. No, you can. We created a scoreboard that's on the TV in the, uh, in the uh, break room. Yeah. And uh, it kind of just sits up there and it, it's a little spreadsheet that shows them where they were at last week, where they were at two weeks ago, where they're at this week, and then tells mm -hmm. them which tier they fall under. Yeah. We, uh, I think they, they, they call our GM and he's, he tells them, um, you know, and they, and they call a lot because they're, they're eager to know, they're eager to find out. And <clears throat> that's way better. He would rather have those calls than have a technician sitting at two o'clock, not wanting another job because he's not going to make any more or any less, yeah. you know, because that's what you run into. And, uh, to the guy's credit, they're they're gonna do what they can, what they can get away with. I did it, and I think that doesn't make you a bad person if you, especially in the summertime, if your system is set up to where if you finish a job at two o'clock and and you stay out of the way and, and under the radar, um, that's not what I want to see as a general as a as a business owner. But if your system is set up such where they make the same either way they're going to do it. Yep. Automate your company's day-to-day -day scheduling, dispatching, and billing systems with Service Titan. Service Titan is the world's leading all-in-one field management software for home service businesses looking to improve efficiency and profitability. Just ask the Coach's Corner listeners who have made the move to Service Titan. Not only have they saved thousands by eliminating time spent on profit-sucking manual tasks, but they now have scalable processes in place to help grow their business for years to come. To check them out and to take advantage of special discounts for Coach's Corner listeners, Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash service titan. We could do a whole episode on that, but yeah, we should do a whole episode on peace rate. Yeah. Why don't you add that to the notes for us? Um, but in All the right. meantime, let's keep it moving uh, with part four of our fear series. Um, where we're, we're going to talk about modules 10, 11, and 12. Um, and why don't you dive right into module 10. Module 10 is titled Image Matters. Um, and we're talking all about branding, all about brand capital. Uh, capital. Um, talking about wrapping your trucks. Talking about how we dress our guys, how we dress ourselves. Yeah. You want to give a little intro to that? Yeah. As it pertains to fear, <laughs> when I joined the Success Academy, I saw, I saw the Image Matters module. And... And I had heard 
you know, Dan Antonelli on potty talk and I knew it was coming down the pipe and it scared me to death. Like I didn't want to rebrand that. This was another thing, you know, I talked about peace rate being the roadblock and I was like, well, that's the one, that's the one thing I'm not going to do because I'm comfortable where I am. I'm comfortable paying hourly. Well, when it came time to consider rebranding, so you would look a certain way in the eyes of your avatar customer. I was like, man, I love our logo. Our logo is the best logo I can think of. I mean, it's a water drop. It's blue on a white van. It's freaking awesome, dude. I don't know. I mean, surely they're not talking about me changing my brand. I mean, people say they see our trucks everywhere. And it, it was a fear. And not only rebranding, but you when you sign up for kick charge and I can only speak about kick charge because that's who I went with. And I, I'm so happy that I did. Um, Dan sent me his book. Um, branded, not blanded. <laughs> and he, there's a, there's a section in there where, you know, for, let me back up and say, he sends it to you. So you'll read about it and you'll kind of understand the method that they're going through. So you won't have so many, um, objections that they have to explain to you because they're not making the logo and the brand for you. They're making it for your customer. Mm -hmm. And that's different than what you're used to and what I was used to. So I didn't really have a ton of questions for Dan and his team when he, um, by the time it was my turn to go and, and, and Allison was involved in that. She's the one that came up with the, with the Pelican and they ran with it. And, uh, but we'll get into that in a minute, but, um, so not only rebranding, but renaming the company was on the table. And he says in his book, if your last name is on the, is, is on, is part of it, you're probably going to, you're probably going to ask to be renamed. And I was, I was, I was uncomfortable with that because we've been in business since 2006 and it's been Wally plumbing the whole time. And I was really uncomfortable, but I went to Allison and I said, you know, we're going to trust these guys. Um, we got to trust them. And if they ask me to rename the company, I'm going to have to do it. So we started thinking up names, man. We had a couple and they'll help you with that too. Kick charge will, but it, we, we were thinking about changing the name and the day came for the meeting and Dan and my my graphic designer was was Patrick and Dan was on the call. And, and the only thing I was thinking about was him saying, well, we're going to have to re rename it. You know that, right? And I was, was waiting for that, but he started introducing himself and do going through the things. And I said, man, I can't get this off my mind. I said, it, um, are you going to ask me to rename the company? And he's like, no, Wally's easy to say. I think we can work with it and I think we can do a lot with it. And then your mascot, you know, whatever you choose, it could possibly be named that, you know, we started bouncing ideas and for, I was going to do it for the record. Anybody that's asked to rename their company, I was going to do it. But he said, the pro, the man, the legend said, you don't need to do that. So I was like, Oh man, whatever, whatever you want me to do. <laughs> what a relief. It was a relief because I was thinking about the website change and it just all down the pipe and it was just like, ugh. but I would have done it for the record. But just to kind of round that out, after we went through the whole rebranding and the wraps and the the uniforms and the hats and the website, it was a complete rebranding and we had it so streamlined that it happened really quickly and it was a huge investment, but it was so worth it. And you think that people see your trucks everywhere now, if you have the quote unquote, as Dan puts it, the white van syndrome. If you listen, if your vehicles are white and then they incorporate red and blue in them, man, nobody's, nobody's noticing you. Nobody's noticing you. And you need to hear me say that. And, and, and if you get somebody like Dan, they're going to say the same thing. It's just, it's just something that most people do when they go into business. Yep. Well, it's because that's what everyone else does, right? Well, every, yep. well, what's everybody else charge an hour? Oh, 
what software is everyone else using? Oh, they just use pen and paper. Oh, how's everyone else decorate their van? Yeah. It's just sheep following sheep. And it's just, it's just, you don't, you don't know any better. Right. And that's the beauty of uh, the MDP system is that it lays out for you, uh, you know, step by step, what you actually need to be doing versus what you think you need to be doing based on years of bad conditioning. Yeah. It's hard to turn that mindset around, but you and I have both been through the rebrand. We both went with kick charge and we both have mascots and Mm -hmm. I totally underestimated how good it feels to have a mascot and a brand and how proud I am of, of our brand. I'm proud of your brand. When you sent me all that, that swag out before I had mine, I was using <laughs> all you because it just looks like you just look so much bigger and so much, you almost look like a nationwide company. Um, and that's not the goal, but <laughs> excuse me, you just look so um, established. Professional. Yeah. <laughs> professional and something yeah. Ms. Jones would want in her driveway. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, the, you know, the possibilities are endless where you take it from there. But once you have that brand right now, you can, you could get those customized doormat, uh, doormats made, right. Where you can set your tools down on them. Uh, You know, it just, it just kicks everything up a notch. Absolutely. I'm, I'm always excited to see, like, we used to get, like, we'd get huggers, you know, for drinks with our old logo. For people that aren't in Mobile, that's a koozie. Yeah. It keeps your drink cold, your beverage of choice cold. We call them huggers around here, koozies, whatever. Um, But, you know, we didn't, we didn't go, we got pins and huggers, I think. But now we got pins, huggers, stickers, uh, the mats that our guys put out to to protect the floor and the, um, the countertop. We've got shirts, hats, um, like hydro flasks, coffee cup. I mean, just it's. Yeah. I, I'm so proud of it. You know it's how many just... times I've been asked if we sell our shirts or our sweatshirts? Like, oh, is there like a website I can go to to buy those? And I've thought about doing it. Like, just set it up with my apparel guy where I have a section of my website that sells shirts. and Because people love our brand, man. It's so on par for for the area that we're at. We're, you know, a very small beach town and we got this cool starfish and this this beach scene on the trucks and people just go crazy for it. Yeah. I remember when you first put um you had the the billboard that was flown around along the beach. Oh, the banner plane. plane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was cool to see. Uh and, you know, I remember the first time you sent me the picture of your actual billboard. And I hadn't done anything like that. And it was just, man, it just was so cool. And then when I see mine, now that I have them, I see them around town. It's like, man, dude, that I'm just, just, you know, you just, you just feel so proud of it. You're not just a, just a plumbing company. It's like you're a real brand and people recognize you. Mm-hmm. They see you everywhere. They it's just a whole nother level of it's a whole nother level of we see you everywhere, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Funny story about, you know, we have a TV commercial now um, yeah. and we're not a big national brand. So we didn't hire actors to do it. Right. Like we did the commercial ourselves yeah. um, and we brought in our content guy and he filmed it for us. Um, and I was at the gym the other day and there's this older gentleman, maybe in his early seventies. And he's like, you're the guy I always see on TV. And I was like, oh, yeah, man. You're you a celebrity know? now? Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. So he's like, oh, is it your company? We get to talk. And he's like, oh, who did the voiceover? That was great. I was like, oh, that was my wife. Um, we we talked for like five or 10 minutes. Very nice older guy. Um, you know, I go about my day. I tell Ashley about it. She thinks it's hilarious. Um, because we had gotten that in the past where it was like, you know, people we knew. They were like, oh, I saw your commercial. Oh, I saw your commercial. I had the other day one of the at lacrosse practice it was our first lacrosse practice of the year and one of my players comes up to me he's like coach matt coach matt coach matt i was at woody's for lunch and i saw you on tv um 
So we got it with like people that we know, but this is the first time like a stranger said something to me. Yeah. And then that was on a Monday. And then fast forward to the next time I'm at the gym, which was Wednesday. And I'm walking out as he's walking in, he's like checking in at the desk. Um, and he's talking to the girl behind the desk and he's like, he's like, Oh, just ask the plumber. He should know. Do you know him? He owns Belmar plumbing. Have you, have you seen their commercial? Their commercial's great. And he just goes on and on and on to this poor girl. That's about awesome. great our commercial. We've never done service for this guy. Right. So talk about creating raving fans through just branding, um, and being true to where you're at. Um, we did, we didn't even have to do service for this guy and he's walking around the gym telling everyone how great we are. Yeah. And you overcame the fear of, uh, going through the process of of being in the commercial, paying for the commercial, and continuing that brand um, awareness, you know, on and on. That's a, that's a big investment. I know when we did ours, I was not in my commercial. I uh, we we hired a friend. Um, <laughs> thank you, Ashley, uh, and uh, uh, we paid one of our technicians. Thank you, Blake, to be in the commercial, and we used the Airbnb down there, Moon Pie Manor. Um, <clears throat> to to shoot the thing and you know people still say like when they see when they can associate me with the company oh we see you especially the ladies at church we see you all the, we see you your, your company all the time on tv i also did like a i was on the news interview on a news interview it's called tape five on our local news station and we replay it and and we re uh we stream it and the ladies, they're like, we see you all the time on on TV. I'm like, oh, man, you know, I just, you know, it just feels good, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, it really is awesome. And I, and, and I wouldn't be near as proud if I was doing any of that with, with our old logo. All the while, I was apprehensive, and I thought that our customers would, would want to keep our old logo, if that, yeah. if that logic makes any sense. I thought they were going to miss it. Or something. <laughs> no one misses it. What about module 11? It's B2B. Um... So there's not a whole bunch of fear for me when it's, when you're talking about module 11, um, you know, it, I, I think there's the, the one fear that I could think of in module 11, really it's, it's more a solution to a fear that you have before you get here. Um, mm -hmm. and the big one for me was, uh, you know, I'm going to have a shop and I'm going to have all these guys and, and how am I going to make sure that shop is stocked or we have water heaters on the shelf or we got boilers on the shelf, you know, these big ticket items that make, make the day to day a lot easier if they're on the shelf. Um, yeah. and it was, you know, yeah, you know, I, I quickly, you know, came up with a list and it was like $80,000 worth of stuff. Right. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, Richard talks about this in mod in module 12. Um, he's talked about it on potty talk too, I think. Um, but the solution to that is going to your vendors, right? Whether that be, you know, a supply house or an online supply house or whoever you're using, um, and figuring out a way to have them offer consignment. Yeah. Um, and consignment's beautiful. Consignment is basically, they they can keep more things on their shelf in the in the warehouse mm -hmm. um that they can sell to customers that are coming in every day um because they're going to use a portion of your warehouse to store to store things yeah it's um, mutually beneficial really oh it, yeah it's very yeah because then they could keep one more water heater where they're not out of stock of that right or they can keep yeah. two more or 10 more um, and it's basically, you know, they, they use our warehouse. They, they bring these things there and they sit there until we use it. We use it. They come by once a week. They scan their items with the little gun. Mm -hmm. Um, they know what we used, what we didn't use, and then we get billed for it. Um, yeah. so we're not getting billed for this. As you use them. Yeah. So we're not getting billed for this until after the job is complete. And we've, and we've, uh, we've collected on that. Yeah. I love that. We do that with water heaters, grinder pumps. Um, and we're going to do that with water filtration too, water treatment. So uh, 
it's just a, you know, you have to overcome the the anxiety of going to them and asking them, but you need to realize <clears throat> it, that it's mutually beneficial for them as well, not just you. You're not asking. Like initially, I thought that asking them was going to require them to like trust me with a bunch of, you know, a bunch of their material, which it does. But I mean, if they trust you, they're going to allow you to store that material which does take up a lot of room. That's a good point. I didn't even, that that's not something that I thought about, but most of the guys that I've talked to are glad to do it. They just have to check and make sure that everything is, you know, being built out properly, but it's mutually beneficial for, for all, all involved. Yeah. Um, the last module though, I do have something that, that, um, I'd like to talk about in regards to fear and mindset, <clears throat> you know, living the dream, all this is um, things that you can do when you've created your systems and you're, you're using the processes that have been introduced to you. Um, and all seems like it'll be well, you have time with your family, whatever your why was in the beginning, that's what you've worked towards and that's what you can enjoy. But I, what I didn't see coming down the pipe was the, the, the imposter syndrome and the, the tendency to kind of self sabotage whenever you really have entrusted people to do to, you've delegated things, but you start running into these these mental obstacles. Like you're used to solving problems, you've been used to solving problems for years and years and years. And when you've put so many systems in place, where most of those problems are solved by way of the system, or by the general manager that you've entrusted to to run the company, or by the the office staff, and you don't have any problems to solve you've got a whole nother issue where you don't know what to do with your time. Now that's a good problem to have, but it is a problem. And it did yeah. affect me in a way where I, I, I created problems and self-sabotage myself in the beginning. Yeah. You and I did a lot of talking about that. Um, and how before you even create the problems, it's the mindless clicking around service Titan or whatever, whatever platform you're using and just, Oh, what's going on in this job? Oh, what's going on in this job? What's going on in this job? Why doesn't he have options built yet? Then you're bugging your manager, right? Oh, why doesn't he have, you know? And it's like, just yeah. let the system do its thing. Yeah. And what I mean by self-sabotage is not only does it create a comfort because I'm back into a situation where there's chaos but it also creates a problem for the general manager that you've you've depended on and you've you've delegated. You're making his or her life miserable because they're by all accounts doing a great job, but because I couldn't um I didn't have the mental capacity to accept the fact that we, not me, but we have built a great company and it's running the way it's supposed to run. I just had the, I just had the hardest time like accepting that, you know, and it's a, it's a real thing. And, and I, I, I talked to Richard about it and, and Laura, I've talked to Allison about it because, you know, it's just, uh, I would start fixating on things around the house when I didn't have anything to fix at work and it, you know, it drove her nuts, man. <laughs> it drove her nuts. Yeah. Um, she was just trying to play some Fortnite. And yeah. here you are, like <laughs> she she is like a super Fortnite champion, like the battle royale champion. Um, uh, but uh, among other things, by the way, but that was just a, a real problem, and we had to work through that. Um, and and Richard Richard says, and you know, it never goes away. the 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 self sabotage you can you can get a hold of, but the a different aspect of it, the, the imposter syndrome where you can't actually 
believe that you have created what you've created and you've become successful, that's, that's a mindset that, you know, it has yet to go away for me. And Richard says he deals with it all the time. I've, I've heard Ed Milet say he deals with it. It just, it's just something that you have to get past. Yeah. And the key for me here was, uh, continually trying to put myself in rooms with people who are bigger than me. Yeah. Um, so it's not enough to say, you know, Oh, I, I built a multi-truck multi-million dollar company and then kind of rest on those laurels and be like, Oh, I'm the top dog now. You know, I'm so much better than the guy down the road with a white van syndrome and two trucks. I'm so much better than the guy with four trucks over there. Um, mm -hmm. Or the guy that's got 10 trucks, but he's doing less in revenue than I am. Um, it, it's not enough to sit there and say, I've reached, I've reached, <laughs> Harry, I've reached the top. <laughs> um, you got to, you got to then seek out another room to enter yourself into. And that's going to be a room filled with CEOs and a room filled with people who are smarter than you, been doing this longer than you and are more successful than you. Um, and that's going to avoid that creep of, you know, Hey, I've got everything I've ever wanted. And it's going to kind of drive you into a direction of, you know, oh, how do, how do I make it even better? Or how do yeah. I, even better yet, how do I start a new business that can be then supplemental income, that can be passive income? Um, these are the things that we can start talking to once you've made it to module 12. You got a little more time on your hands, you got a little bit more money in the bank. What can we do now that's going to allow our money to work for us? Yeah, what do you do with that entrepreneurial spirit that got you here? Because it doesn't just go away. I mean, entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs. They, uh, you got to do something to 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 with that energy, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and the answer is not drive everybody that you you've depended on for years to to help get the company successful. It's, it's not to drive them crazy. That's for damn sure. Um, no. Um, no. So, you know, but other than that, module 12 is, is, you know, it's just full of ways you can enjoy life and with your spouse and just enjoy what you, what you've helped create. You know, I'm real careful to say what I've created. Yeah, because I don't I don't believe that in, in any sense that I created that by myself. I, I've had a team of people the whole time that that have helped me. And I think that that's super important to point out and to to really believe because I, it always pissed me off when I I had this one homeowner, I mean, home builder that always said, I, I did this. I did this. And he didn't lift the first tool mm -hmm. like I just got the I just got the house wired. I just wired the house today. I need you to come in and top it out. And he <laughs> and I did I built this house. I oh it is just it's just it's a real pet peeve of mine. Mm. So I'm just real careful to say that we because I damn I didn't I didn't do anything alone. Yeah. I just even took a you, lot of risk. Even if you even if you're not giving any credit to your employees, which you should be, um, because they certainly do most of the work, right? Um, like we definitely play a hand in it and we kind of direct them, but they're the ones doing the day to day. Um, but you have to at least give credit to your wife because, or your husband, if you're a lady plumber or a lady electrician, um, or a lady HVAC guy, uh, but lady HVAC girl, sorry. Um, <laughs> oh man, we're really digging a hole here, <laughs> but, um, you know, you got to give credit to, as Richard calls them, your better other, because, they were with you when it was tough, when you were the guy in the van and you were running those emergency calls at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday. And and yeah. all they lived with you through all of that. And they suffered because of it. And they were there to make sure that the kids went to bed on time and the kids were fed while you were attending to those quote unquote emergency jobs, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then whether or not they came to work in the business, my wife did, she came to work in the business. And that's when we really started to skyrocket by her helping me get these systems in place. Um, but you know, if nothing else, it's, it's, it's holding down the, the home, right. For sure. While you're, while you're out making all the mistakes on your entrepreneurial <laughs> journey, um, of yeah. 
doing 24 hour service and working for the builders and, and all this stuff. Um, it's, it's easy to lose sight of the fact that, um, you know, for me, my wife was the most important thing in building my business because I never could have built it without her. Absolutely. I feel the same way too. I just, uh, I've put Allison through some dark times just because of my absence, you know, uh, just because of the, whether, it, whether, and when I say absence, I mean, <clears throat> I could be sitting there with her at dinner, but if I'm on my phone trying to work out a problem or I'm talking to somebody trying to, trying to work out a problem or I'm off on a job because I'm on call and I don't want to, I don't know how to turn off my mind or, or, or say no to a customer that needs us. Um, I've, I've done that for years. You know, like I said, we joke around about me being older than you, but I, I've been in business for 17 years. And for 14 of those years, I was available to everybody. It felt like, and you know, I've got, I've got a 16 year old daughter <clears throat> and a 12 year old son now. And, and, and we did our absolute best. I think, I think Allison would, agree that we did our absolute best to sh to spend as much time family time as we could and I think we did a good job with that uh but I was in business before my kids were born and I wasn't there for her for Allison and I and, uh, you know so so module 12 can be a thank you to the to the to the spouses that stuck around and <laughs> you know made it through cuz it's a lot of fun to be had you know business is not all it's not all struggle there are some some things to celebrate and and you can celebrate big when you when you succeed so in saying that that rounds out our fear series this is our four-part fear series if you're if you're still listening thank you for sticking around for the for the four parts i've enjoyed it i've i've i look back on these things and i'm i'm some of it i'm glad that that it's over uh, <laughs> but it's fun to look back and and um just kind of reminisce on those things. You want to close this out, Matt? Uh, yeah. I mean, you got your uh, master's shirt on there. So you talked about, you talked about Allison being a Fortnite grand Jeff champion, but uh, you didn't tell the people that you are a VR golf world champion. Well, I try to be. And when you say VR world champion, you mean VR. We have three people, me, you and Chase. <laughs> And that's our and world you, and and you don't win every time but it's no. fun to think about yeah chase usually wins uh <laughs> we can call it nerd world champion golf yeah. champion <laughs> all right man let's get out of here all right man see you see you next time bye all right well that does it for this episode of coach's corner make sure to like and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. thanks for stopping by